Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Do Fish Have a Home? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the ICES Journal of Marine Science, published on September 16, 2021. Research conducted by Thomas Stamp, Emma Sheehan, and others from the School of Biological and Marine Sciences at the University of Plymouth in the UK. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Do you have a favorite place? One that makes you feel safe and has everything you need to survive? Now imagine you're in your favorite place and a skunk wanders in. You run away because you don't want to end up stinky. This same thing happens to young juvenile fish when their favorite places get polluted or are not protected. Fish might even get caught by fishermen. A lot of fish populations are in danger because too many individuals are caught or there aren't enough safe places for juveniles to hide. If we protect their favorite places, we might be able to keep fish populations from decreasing. We tracked European bass, an important fish in Europe, for a year to try to figure out where their favorite places were. We found that most European bass stayed close to the coastal sites we caught them from. Our goal is to identify more of these coastal sites. That way, humans can protect them and fish populations can thrive. Introduction European bass are important fish in the Northeast Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Their population size decreased to very low levels in 2016. This was partly because of fishing pressure. It has recovered, but is still lower than what it was in the past. It will likely decrease again if they're not protected more. Normally, juvenile fish grow into adults and replace the adults that are caught through fishing. This process is called recruitment. This is not happening very well in the European bass population. We think European bass spend a lot of time in coastal areas like estuaries and sheltered bays. These coastal areas are at high risk from human activities. For example, coastal development can change the amount of nutrients and sediment in the water. Different water conditions like these can harm young fish. Here you can see Dr. Stamp releasing a European bass back to its estuary after tagging it. The top half of the photo is in the air, and you can see Dr. Stamp in a red life jacket. The bottom half of the photo is underwater, and you can see the European bass being released by Dr. Stamp's hands. It takes juvenile European bass a long time to grow into adults. They tend to stay in the estuary they live in until they are fully grown. So if their habitat gets damaged, they don't just move to another estuary. We wanted to know how and when juvenile European bass use different coastal areas. We hope our results can help identify areas that will protect these fish. Protected areas could help the whole population by helping fish stay safe as they become adults and helping increase recruitment. Methods. We caught 146 European bass in three protected nursery sites in the southwest UK. In figure one, you can see the Dart Estuary in Dartmouth, England. Estuaries are places where freshwater rivers meet the salty ocean. They provide shelter and food for lots of young ocean animals, including fish. We placed an acoustic tag inside each fish and then released it. We placed 78 receiver instruments throughout the nursery sites. Whenever a fish got close to a receiver, it recorded the time, date, and fish ID. We tracked fish movement like this for a year. We used our data to determine how much time fish spent at the protected nursery site they were originally caught in, or when they moved into other unprotected coastal areas. 
We also calculated if these movements were related to fish size. Results. We saw clear seasonal differences between the various nursery sites. We found all fish had wider movements at some point. Some visited neighboring estuaries. The most adventurous individuals traveled to Wales, over 300 kilometers or 200 miles away. 45% of wider movements were in the winter. Many of these fish were from the Dart estuary. Most of them returned to their original nursery by the end of our study. And 55% of fish stayed in their original nursery during the winter. We also found that residence time varied between nursery sites, but it was not related to fish size. Here in Figure 2, you can see the percentage of time fish spent close to their nursery site. On the x-axis, you can see the three protected nursery sites. From left to right, they are the Dart Estuary, Salcombe Harbor, and the Ta Torridge Estuaries. The y-axis shows the residence time. Looking at the data, which of the nursery sites had the lowest residence time? Discussion. Our study showed that European bass generally like to stay close to coastal nursery sites. Even most fish that had long coastal movements tended to return to their original nursery. These patterns were not related to fish size. This means coastal nursery habitats are important for them at lots of different ages. It also means they are important year round. If we want to help fish populations, we need to protect these coastal nursery habitats. This might be hard. 85% of Europe's coastline is at risk for development. This could change environmental conditions in nursery habitats and harm fish. One way to protect these areas is to label specific places as essential fish habitat or fish stock recovery areas. These special titles define areas where fishing could be really harmful. Marine management organizations also use these labels. They design plans that protect habitats and prevent overfishing. With more protected areas, fish populations will likely increase. Many other important fisheries are declining around the world. We need more information to protect them properly. We are expanding our research to look at other species like tuna, pollock, and crawfish. Hopefully, we can learn how they use coastal areas across the UK and France to help protect them. Conclusion Lots of people depend on fish for food. Fish are also important to the health of the ocean. You can help make sure their populations do not decline. If you eat fish, make sure their population is stable. If you don't eat fish, you can still help by protecting coastal habitats. You can participate in beach cleanups, get involved in local ocean protection organizations, use less fertilizer in your yard and throw away your trash properly, or contact your government representatives to encourage good development practices along coastlines. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.